Hello everyone, this is Count Riolo, bringing you another video talking about Star Trek Online. Because of the extreme backlash about the Cardenas Carden Dreadnought Cruiser, I thought it was time to properly explore all the general Starship classes and subclasses in the game. And so that is what I'm going to do today. And it's going to be about 50 slides, so it's going to take a while to do so. With three general classes and, you know, five to six special classes for each one of those, it's going to be a while here, and it's going to be a lot more of statty type stuff inside of inside of this video. So feel free to skip to the TLDR stuff at, at the end if, if you want a shorter, like, five to ten minute video instead of the longer video that this is going to be. But anyway, um, when I was preparing this, I, I had to personally start figuring out what all the general subtypes inside of the game were, were going to be. And obviously some different things exist, but some of the other classes, especially when we talk about the Realm of the Republic, aren't fully established, or at least as published as established um, to all of us. Now, obviously Cryptic has gone out of their way to figure out those subclasses on their own, but um, it was up to me for this video to figure out what all those different classes actually were. And so I did that's the best that, that I could. You, you, you can see that at the right. And so, yeah, for each of the subclasses, I will have an info slide um, explaining what the criteria for that category is going to be, and then a slide with four columns for the four different factions inside the game. One for each of, of the main factions, and then another one for the cross-faction starship list that any captain in the endgame could access. Um, for, for these stats on the 250 or so starships at Series 6 and game strength is what's going to be listed. I will also show some other tier 5 ships as well alongside them that I feel are noteworthy and important to show. But those tier 5 starships are not going to be included in the total starships listed for this video. That total of 215 is just for the tier 6 starships at endgame capable ready status inside of the game. What that also means is like if there's, for instance, a sea star starship and a fleet starship of the, basically the exact same thing. I will be choosing the strongest of, of the two, which would obviously be the, the um, fleet version. But anyway, um, with all of that said, um, let's um, go ahead and get started with all this. Now for the general categories in this, the three general categories obviously is cruisers, escorts, and science vessels. The general guidelines here revolves around the commander bridge officer profession for the starship. Is it a commander engineering? then I'm going to call it a, a cruiser. Is it, does it have a commander tactical seat? Then I'm going to call it an escort class vessel, even if the vessel isn't reminiscent of what we would typically think of as an escort. Same thing for science vessels with a commander science seat. When there's a commander universal seat, I will typically defer to whatever the profession of the starship is listed under the Admiralty system, unless there's something very important that's already blatant in that starship that, that compels me to um, to choose a different category. Now, listed here are going to be the six variations for each Starship class. Now, Engineering doesn't have a PvP version, so it's not going to have a, a real applicable thing for that, but the rest of the other classes will have six different variants. Um, and the, the specifications for those different categories, as stated in this last slide, is the standard version, the flight deck version, or the version with one hangar bay, a balance version, which is a little bit different for each class, the dreadnought version, the carrier version, which is the version with two hang hangar bays, and then the PvP version. So anyway, with all this, let's go ahead and get started with first off cruisers. It is the category with the most ships, and um, <laughs> I think that's probably that probably would be very felt by by a lot of us inside the game. The Federation obviously has the most starships here. The KDF has a lot of battle cruisers, so they do have a, have a sizable amount in their fleet as well. Um, so yeah, um, when, when it comes down to all of that, our standard cruisers have nothing extremely special about them. They do, they have the standard eight weapons, like any other cruiser is going to have, and they have access to every single cruiser command available inside the game. This does add to their flexibility, uh, considering that. You know, they aren't going to be the ones that have the highest damage potential. They don't have to have the cannons. So, and the, actually, a lot of these aren't even going to have a Lieutenant Commander Tactical Seat. So, it honestly wouldn't even be real makes, make enough sense to have a dual heavy cannon stuff for a lot of these ships anyway. 
But anyway, um, whenever we, we get into looking at a lot of these ships, about half of the Federation's standard cruisers are from the fleet, while some of the Vably strongest tanks are from the sea store, especially with the flagship cruisers and American worker cruisers. Although the Rom the Romulan American worker warbirds don't have access to cruiser commands, all of their ships can use dual heavy cannons, which especially if you combine that with some of the really special Miracle Work worker powers, which I talked about earlier last week, um, you can actually still make dual heavy cannons work really well on the Miracle Worker warbirds. And um, when it comes to the cross faction ships, the only one here that's really noteworthy at all that people still look at to occasionally is going to be the Zal Heavy Heavy Cruiser, just because it happens to have a trait called Invincible which is invaluable for PvP battles. Now for our next category, Flight Deck Cruisers, it's, a, it's an extreme fringe niche in, in Star Trek Online. You either love these ships and you think they are extremely good, or you think they are completely worthless inside of the game. And honestly, I wouldn't entirely disagree with you. You only have two Cruiser Commands, which are the defensive versions. And... You, you lose um, the offensive stuff to get a hangar bay. The problem with this ship, honestly, with these ships, honestly, is that you don't get weapon system weapon efficiency, which is the really good one for DPS captains. And additionally, you don't get dual heavy cannons. So even though most of these ships ha actually have a 5-3 layout, 5 weapons in the front, 3 in the back, because you don't have access to dual heavy cannons, you can't really fully capitalize on those benefits for your ships. Many such would be good if you could use dual heavy cannons on them. However, because you can't, most TPS captains completely ignore these altogether. However, they still have strong base stats and their utility honestly makes them lean heavily towards ideal builds for, for tanking inside the game. And that's where their strength comes from. I do love them a lot because of it. Um, the, these fleet flight XL cruisers are also really decent platforms for torpedo DPS builds as well, but there are better options for DPS torpedo builds as well inside the game. For our next category is battle cruisers. Battle cruisers, if you're a DPS captain, this is the class you should be looking at, as they're very well rounded. Like you lose command track fire. A, a, a cruiser command you're not going to use at all if you're not a tank captain. And what, what you gain from it is the ability to use dual heavy cannons on a cruiser, which is really, really nice. It's basically a win for everyone besides tanks, which is unfortunate for the many of you who are watching this channel that are tank captains. Because you're like, come on, it's another class that I can't use. But honestly, it's not, uh, for, for non-tank captains, battle cruisers are very, very well-rounded. You still can make them work if you're a tank captain, but it's just a little bit harder, frankly. Now, all the Federation players don't have access to the quantity of battle cruisers that the KDF players have access to. They do still have two high quality battle cruisers, the Fleet Arbiter and the Fleet Shepherd. The Arbiter Sea Store variant has a trait that has been a staple in the DPS scene for a very long time. And the Fleet Shepherd is the Flea Merc Worker Battle Cruiser, by the way, is honestly the best DPS ship in game currently that is available from the fleet. Anything better, and you honestly have to venture into the Sea Store or to the Exchange to find something better. The KDS Fleet Merc Worker Battle Cruiser is also very good as well, just like the Shepherd, but that one also has a Battle Cloak, which does make it objectively better. As a side note here, um, for some of you that might have noticed, I do have the D9 Dreadnought Battle Cruiser listed here instead of in the Dreadnought Cruiser section, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. This is here mainly to help a lot of you tank captains realize and don't get fooled by the current listing on the STO Wiki. On the STO Wiki, it says that the D9 Dreadnought Battle Cruiser has regular Battle Cruiser commands, so Weapon System Efficiency and Command Track Fire, which is not true. And I need to emphasize that right now because the D9 Dreadnought Battle Cruiser this ship right here has regular battle cruiser commands, not regular dreadnought cruiser commands. So don't be fooled by the SO Wiki and think that this ship would be really good for tanking. It's it's a battle cruiser just like a lot of the rest of these. It's just that this happens to also have a hangar bay, so it's really weird in that aspect. 
don't pick this ship if, if you want to tank with it. it it's an expensive ship, just like just, just like the pro prototype um, Dreadnought Cruiser, except that one, that ship actually has a console that, that's good for you. This one, you don't need the console from the tank. So don't be fooled to buy this ship. Just, just ignore it unless you really, really like the looks and are a DPS captain and can't afford the, uh, the temporal battle cruiser. If you're doing that, then that, then it's totally in, in, in an okay ship to buy. Also, as side notes here, um, the Tal Shar ship here um, has sensor analysis, which is pretty cool, and the not cool battle cruiser has a built-in battle cloak. So, if you don't have battle cloaks easily accessible to you, like Federation captains. And want a battle cloak battle cruiser this is a decent option for you as well all right anyway speaking of dreadnought cruisers in general um this is our next category and these are the cruisers with honestly probably the two best cruiser commands that are in most demand from, from the player base which is weapon system efficiency for dps captains and command extract fire for tank captains this is what makes it hard for cryptic to honestly properly balance and know what to do with these ships what should be noted however in my opinion at least my personal experience here is that cryptic hasn't really released a lot of new standard cruisers lately more of their dreadnought cruisers recently have been geared towards tanking honestly a lot more than dps they have, they've had other ships that were more eager for dps they've also released alongside these honestly right now in the game I feel that Cryptic is moving to have Dreadnought Cruisers, this class right here, as the class for tanking inside the game for tank captains going forward. Yes, the class has access to dual heavy cannons. Yes, the class has access to weapon system efficiency. But you just have better options inside the game than Dreadnought Cruisers. Just throw that out there. I think a lot of this misconception really probably came back to the fact that a couple years ago we got the Federa federation captains got a ship called the kelvin timeline intel dreadnought cruiser it was a pretty solid dps starship for a long time alongside the juggernaut ships which i'll talk about later in this video and since it was a dreadnought cruiser the concept of dreadnought cruiser i think has warped up a little bit around that particular ship and now the concept is that Obviously, if it's a Dreadnought Cruiser, it's got to be an insanely good DPS ship. For a long time, I mean, looking at a lot of these ships, the concept of Dreadnought Cruiser, just like the Dreadnought variants for the other two classes, it's around Bruiser Survival. Just like the Escort and Science Vessel variants. So, I feel like that that they're doing, that our, our brand new um, Command Dreadnought Cruisers from the fleet do that job perfectly. Do they you know do the same dps as some of the other cruisers no but that's perfectly fine not all cruisers need to do an insane amount of damage to be able to do their job properly okay um our last real category for cruisers is going to be engineering carriers and these are carriers that have a commander engineering bridge officer slot all carriers in, in the game by the way have two hangar bays and all of them also can use dual heavy cannons. Though with the lessened weaponry and limited mobility, I'm not sure that's the best option for them. I mean, I, I could definitely see it with these faction-specific promo dreadnought cruisers, which, which are the only carries in the game that actually have eight weapons and have two hangar, hangar bays, which makes them, I think, a little bit over overpowered. Um, but that's just me. If you use no ships, then probably you can use dual heavy cannons, and you'll probably still do really great damage. But I mean, outside of those faction-specific ships, these engineering carriers don't really do a ton of damage. Now, um, just as a side note here, on this slide, I I have listed as I have I've listed the Tholian carrier here. This is one of the situations where I didn't know whether to put the Tholian carrier here or in the science carrier section because it has a, a commander universal seat and with four engineering and four science um, consoles and pretty equal in engineering and science which I've seen I was like I don't know which one to put this in so I, I looked at the Admiralty and well it's listed as an, as an engineering ship so okay 
I'll put it in the engineering carrier section. This ship could easily go into the science carrier section as well. Everything else lines up perfectly with, with, with that too. So take that as you will. And of course, as I said already, we don't have um, an engineering PVP vessels, so we have no ships here. All right, so with all that said, let's get to the DPS category of escorts. I know that in STR Reddit there have been a lot of complaints about not, not, not having enough escorts in the game, but looking at the totals here, I don't see it. You know, with 90 tier 6 ships in, in the cruiser category right now, and 86 here in the escort category, of course I am cheating and counting the future tier 6 racing corvette, because that was announced, you know, we don't have the stats for it yet, I'm counting that one right now. I, f I honestly feel that there's a fairly good balance between escorts and cruisers inside of the game right now. Now, yes, if you're looking at the stats for, for the four factions over there, there is a disproportionately large amount of them that are from the cross-faction section versus the specific factions. But I mean, you also have to balance out into realizing that we that we have received two pilot escort mega bundles from the C store. We've received two of them. Which is a lot. So yeah, anyways. Um all the ships in the, in the escort class have a commander tactical for Joshua seat, as well as all of them. Every single variant has access to dual heavy cannons. Most of the ships have eight weapons as well. Carriers and raiders don't. We'll get to those later. And in general, they also have very high maneuverability to survive over, you know, really high hull, really high shield ratios. Standard escorts um, have their eighth weapon as an ex have a, has a, as a special experimental weapon. Now there is one available by default whenever you, you get a ship. There is one that, that you can get from competitive war games, and the rest of them you can get from specific starships from the Sea Store or the Exchange. Feel free to see the link in the description for the experimental weapon link if, if, if you're curious on, on, on where to get all those inside the game. Now, thanks to the pilot escort mega bundles, there are plenty of escorts to choose from in, in the game. What I am going to say though, because I don't really feel I have a lot of things to say about this general section, because I'm a tank captain in the game, not really a DPS escort captain, is that there are two escorts that I love tanking with, that I think are good enough to tank with, and that's probably not normal to say. So first off, my my number one that I like right now is the tier six Alachi escort. Alachi Satet, I think that's how you, how you say it. It has some of the highest base stats in the game for it for an escort. It's like it's it's like number it's it's like number one hole and number two on shields. It's it's like really high, or is it like it's it's definitely like number two at least at least of both of those. It's really really high. Um, the other escort that I've loved for a long time, and I'll probably go back to after the summer, is actually the Rising Corvette. It's my, it's my number two favorite escort for tanking, basically of all time. The only downsides for this ship, for me personally, was that you did, there was no specialization seat whatsoever because it's a tier 5 ship. But because the ship is the fastest ship in, in the game, you do get bonuses to defense as well. It's a really nice ship. It's got, even though its racers aren't good, because of the extra defense, it more than makes up for it in the tanking realm. I'm going to be excited to try it out again at the tier 6 level whenever I finally earn it this summer. Alright, so our next category is the flight deck escorts, or escort carriers, or escort raptors, however, you, or flight deck raptors, or whatever you want to call them. They are escorts with one hangar bay. They're slightly less maneuverable typically to have that hangar bay, but other than that, they're basically the exact same as what you would expect from a regular escort. There's not a lot of them inside the game right now. The only one that I think is actually cool to fly is the Geminar Heavy Escort Carrier, because if, if you have a Geminar Recon ship or Strike ship, then you can have Geminar, little Geminar ships flying out of your big ship which is fun to see. Other than that, I'm not really too particularly fond of these ships overall. I prefer a regular escort overall. 
but that's just me. Um, now, this category, Warships and Destroyers, I have a lot to say about. First off, this is our balanced ship section for the Escort class. The balanced one for cruisers was, was battle cruisers, by the way. This is basically the battle cruisers, but for escorts. They're very balanced. They have a lot more hull and shields than normal for a little bit less maneuverability, which for, for typical PvE combat, this is totally fine. You're still going to be faster than most cruisers anyway, so... And a lot of people like to use cruisers anyway for DPS, so you're still going to be just fine in terms of like speeding around, getting to objectives, trying to blow things up. Now, when it comes to the specifics as to whether a ship should be in the destroyer warship section, whether it should be in the general escort section, Cryptic has been reclassifying different things, you know, between destroyers, heavy escorts, light escorts. There isn't a ton of difference between a regular escort and a regular destroyer anymore in Star Trek Online, especially with the, you know, the hull and shield scalings and things that have changed in, in recent years. As thus, even though in the, in the next slide I'm going I'm to list a lot of destroyers and warships, some of those destroyers could easily be in the escort class, and some of the heavy escorts in, in other slides could be in this one as well. What is consistent is what's said on here, is that for destroyers, your 8th weapon is, is an experimental weapon, and warships have their 8th weapon as a regular weapon. You'll probably use it as a, as a turret, honestly, for that 8th weapon slot. In my opinion, the best ships overall in the game for this particular slide is number one, the Geminar Vanguard warship. Number two, the KDF Fleet um, Siege Destroyer. And third, the Tier 6 Veteran Destroyers that are exclusive to if you have a lifetime subscription to the game. Now, a lot of you probably don't have that, which is totally fine. I would go with the, the Fleet Siege Destroyer if you're a KDF captain. If not, and you, you can you can afford stuff in Sea Store. The um, Gemma Vanguard warship is, is an extremely good ship as well. <sighs> Alright. Now to talk about this class. When you compare it to the other sorts of classes, this could have been called a tactical dreadnought or a dreadnought escort. But I guess neither of those sounded very good for Cryptic, and so they decided to call this a Juggernaut instead. Funny enough, by the way, this is not the first ship of this class inside the game. Just the first one available to Federation and KDF captains. This ship, to put it in simple terms, is basically a higher damage, less maneuverable warship put to the extreme. Following the Bruiser, bruiser ar archetype, as I mentioned with, with the Dreadnought Cruisers, of the last general category. If you're wanting to fly a Juggernaut and don't want to pay the extreme cost from the exchange and happen to be a Romulan captain, I would highly recommend going to the Sea Store and getting the Romulan Republic flagship Dreadnought Warbirds. They were the they were basically the classic Juggernauts for such a long time in Star Trek Online and are still decent performers in the DPS realm. Now obviously on the DPS charts, Bob War Juggernaut's gonna outperform these ships significantly, but Considering how old they are, and and how well they've aged into the game, I think they're doing pretty well. Now, their traits aren't strong anymore, but the Sargis themselves are still very good, and their consoles are still very effective, and are exclusive to the flagships inside the game, so it's not like the Bobwar can, um, you know, abuse the good consoles that were on the flagships. Flagships are, are still very good. And this happens to be a flagship that has the bruiser archetype of the Juggernaut as well. And that's why it, it's in this section too. Alright. So this next section is Tactical Carriers. And Tactical Carriers, at least to me, is such a weird concept. Considering that most of your other engineering and science carriers, in my opinion, were supposed to be more of a supportive role inside the game. And... Tactical carriers with a bridge off for seating can't really do that at all. Instead, you really have to focus on DPS and on suppression to be really effective versus other high performers in the game, like the Bob War Juggernaut. Now, 
one of the things to help out with this is that all the tactical carriers have seven weapons, unlike other carriers which typically have six. So that's going to help with you in the DPS realm. Now, someone that doesn't like carriers, I honestly can't say much good about this stuff, honestly. So let's just show, show the ships here. Now, inside the game, there's one KDF tactical carrier, the sarcophagus dreadnought carrier, and then there's five cross faction ones. I really like the Zenkathy one as well as the Geminar one. I mean, the KDF one is decent, but I mean, your Federation and Romulan captains are not complaining at all about not having access to the ship because, hey, because they don't, they can't get this ship or something like it, they're able to get a really cheap survival trait called Honor Dead off of the exchange. Because that's this trait that's on the sarcophagus. <sighs> okay. With all that said, let's get to the last thing for our escorts, which is our raiders. Now, for this particular category, um, I have two different things I've, I've, I've smushed here, simply because Romulan captains don't have actual raiders in, inside the game. They, they just don't. They have something different. Um, instead, they have, they have a couple of ships that have an, an enhanced battle cloak, which is a special type of battle cloak that is able to fire some weapons and abilities while still being cloaked. So think about like the Bird of Prey from Star Trek The Undiscovered Country and the Scimitar from Star Trek Nemesis with, with how those ships fired at their enemies. And that's in a nutshell how the Enhanced Battle Cloak works inside the game. It doesn't work for all weapons, but it does work for a lot of them. Now, with the exception of that element most other raiders um they they get raider flanking which gives them a bonus to damage with hitting an enemy's rear arc to get that they lose a weapon slot and they also get universal bridge off city besides the commander one actually some raiders also get a commander universal as well now our older raiders inside the game did lose one bridge officer ability to have that bridge officer flexibility our, our recent Discovery Raiders don't have that limitation, which means that they're automatically going to be a little bit stronger as a result. Just throwing that out there. It's also why there's not really a ton of Raiders inside the game, simply because, because there's such a large amount of flexibility in the Bridge Officer CD, you don't really need a ton of Raiders inside the game. A couple of Raiders can basically have the same type of bridge off receding as several dozen of of, es, of normal escorts or normal cruisers, because you don't have to have to worry about that. It's really more of the specialization seating is what would really be different and why you'd want more than, than a couple of raiders inside the game. Of these, of these ships here, just to clarify, the Tillis Temporal Warbird is a tactical ship, even though it's labeled as an engineering in the Admiralty system, it does have a commander tactical temporal operative seat. It's just that it happens to have really, really high hull and shield ratios, considering that it's a light warbird. Is, is why Cryptic, I think, defaulted this to be an engineering um, ship. Also, the KDF and Federation versions of the um, the, the TOS ship from, from the R&D promo pack are also engineering ships. They, that might have also just carried over to the ship, too, for the output system purposes. That's definitely a possibility, too. So anyway, let's get to our last category, which is science vessels. As is probably e easily felt by most of you inside the game that have ever tried to play science, we have about half the science vessels that we would have equivalently for escorts and cruisers. We're around like upper 80s to about 90-ish for escorts and cruisers for those general categories. We're only at about 40 for science vessels. And, well, I mean, Crypto over the years has had this conflicted relationship with exotic damage builds inside the game. They consistently made it simpler for us to play them. A lot of the mechanics were much more complicated back when I was starting, back in 2013, 2014, than it is today. Um, but at the same time, they were putting a lot of the really good ships, and especially ships that they before seemed to buy multiple times, for the ships, some of the builds to actually be usable. 
behind extreme paywalls. And a lot of those ships are from cross-faction ships too. And it's a little unfortunate. Um, I think this is one of the coolest classes inside the game. Also makes PvP fun when there's really good science players there doing cool exotic stuff. Because I don't fully understand how that works in PvP. I mean, I know how to fight it, but I don't know how to fully do it myself. It'd be cool if there was a lot more people doing science because it really is the coolest class. Alright, so to kind of like to start off and make, make this simple, science vessels obviously have a commander science bridge officer ability and six weapon slots. Normally, some of them have seven. We'll, we'll get to those later. They, these ships mainly rely upon their shields for their survival. Basically, if your shields go down and you're not a tank captain in a science vessel, you're probably going to die. Part of the reason the Temporal Operative Ultimate, the Temporal Specialization, is the specialization you probably should be using if you're a science captain doing exotic damage in space. The Temporal Operative Ultimate really exists to help science officers survive when they get extreme threat from their abilities, as that problem happens quite a bit in a lot of your random space TFOs. A lot of your damage for science comes from your secondary deflector. By the way, that's something that science ships didn't originally have at the beginning of the, of, of the game. And this element adds a significant damage amount of damage to your ship. Over 25% of your damage on average probably is going to be coming from this. If you're doing science tanking, yes, you might be in a ship that's doing less damage if you're not going to be in a science ship per se. If you, if you have command track fire, you still can tank in a, in, in a non-science vessel, technically. It's doable, it's just harder. Just one way or the other, with lots of threat or lots of survival. Now, when it comes to this slide, by the way, of, all, of, the, of the general science ships in, in the game, now, I mean, if you're looking at this, obviously Federation captains have lots of options. Klingons around the public, if you're going to earn fleet starships, you only have one option. Sad, it's just the way it is. The funny part about this slide is every single cross-faction science vessel standard one is actually good. And I actually like every single one of these. Not cool to most science vessel has, has a battle cloak. And it's actually the only normal science vessel that can use dual heavy cannons. The Athelion Command Science Vessel has a Commander Science C Command, which is super cool. The Athelion Iktomi has Improved Tonic Officer. The Lucari ship has Permatter Field Projector. The Krenum Science ship has Timeline Stabilizer, which is a really powerful console as well. And the Voth Palisade is one of, if not the best, Tier 5 used science ships inside the game. There's also these Science Destroyers. That we'll get to later in, in this video as well. All those ships are really good. A lot of the Federation ones are decent as well. Most of these are, are, are fleet starships. Now the Dakir is a weird starship in that it doesn't have a secondary deflector. Instead it has the support craft that comes out. But it's still a nice ship to fly to, especially if you're going to be a, a support captain in space. Our next category is the multi-mission science vessels. And, well, I mean, I actually really like this category a lot. Um, you might have expect me to say no because I completely hate the flight deck variant for the escort class, but for science vessels, they actually get a lot of benefits because it's not just a hangar bay that you're gaining with, with this vessel. You're also gaining the ability to use dual heavy cannons which is a big bonus and a big power up, especially if you're doing a heavy DPS oriented science ship. multi science vessels allow you to have dual the cannons plus a hangar bay, which is really nice. Plus you still have the secondary deflectors, so you're still gonna be able to do a lot of your assist damage from that too. The weird thing about this is there's an equal amount of, of multi science vessels in every single one of the factions. There, there's three in each of the main through the, the multi-mission science vessel me mega bundle. And then there's three others through cross faction, one through the 31st Century Temple Ship Bundle, and then two through Lockbox, the Spirit Builder one and the Herc one. All of them are are pretty good. 
in their own ways. 10 of the 12 are R3C stores, so that's actually a bonus there. You buy it once, and then you can use it for all the other science captains. I would go with the 31st century one, just because it's fairly well-rounded overall. Gives you most of what you would want for the multi-mission science puzzles regularly. And if you, especially if you're watching this and you're a tank captain, just put the cruiser console from the 31st century bundle on, onto the science vessel and it, it, it immediately becomes a much better tank than most of the other science vessels in this video at all. Now for these guys. <sighs> when the crossfield was initially released in Star Trek Online, I had no idea how to stack it up. I honestly thought, even prior to making this video, that it was a completely overpowered ship inside the game. To some extent, I still do believe that, but that is just because of just because of how much and how powerful a science ship can be whenever you actually make it a balanced science vessel. Uh, I mean, if you recall a few minutes ago, the tactical balanced ships were destroyers and warships, which are pretty good. And the literal science variant of those ships is the science destroyers and science spearheads. Science spearheads are literally just warships that are that are scientified. <laughs> if that's if, if that's a word. Now I really wish Cryptic could have just renamed the science the Crossfield Science uh, Vanguard to the Crossfield Science Warship to make it easier for us to compare, make it easier for people to realize what it actually is. But <sighs> Cryptic has fun has a fun time naming all their ships. So. I'm just going to move on with that. All, all these ships at, at the Tier 6 version have 7 weapons. The Tier 5 Science Destroyers only have have 6, plus the thing when you go into, into tactical mode. But, I mean, all, all these ships are honestly really good. And still, like a lot of the other powerful science ships, they can use dual heavy cannons. They still have the secondary deflector. And they actually have decent hull as well. I mean, the Science Destroyer does have Tactical Mode, which allows you to get rid of the Secondary Deflector for a time and use a Commander Tactical Ability. I still feel that regular Science stuff for a Science Destroyer is going to be a better off option for you. But you basically pretend that the Science Destroyer is a Tactical Destroyer and play it as thus with a Secondary Deflector, boosting that, that damage on, on your ship. You really could play it that way. Now, if, if you're looking at this you probably realize that the only place we actually have tier 6 versions of any of this is in the Federation. Now, fortunately, those ships can also be used by Federation Aligned Romulans, but the Klingon Empire and Klingon Aligned Romulans can't use any tier 6 starships in this entire category, which is really disappointing. For those of you that have been wondering and saying that I thought that there really should be a Miracle Worker science ship inside the game, I most definitely believe that now even more strongly, and that that should definitely be put into this category. A Miracle Worker Worker science ship with fairly well-rounded, like, middle-of-the-road stats as, as, a, as a science spearhead or science destroyer, I feel it would fit in perfectly to fill in the little gap that we have here right now inside the game. TLDR here, Cryptic, please just add a Miracle Worker science ship and make it for, sta for the stats like, like a science spearhead and make that ship or a uh, bundle of that available to clean on captains too so that they can bask in the glory of what science spearheads and science destroyers of tier 6 can um, act actually feel inside the game. So for our next up class is Science Dreadnoughts which is honestly the closest thing KDF captains right now have to this tier 6 science spearheads in the game. These ships have 7 weapons, have one, one hangar bay, access to dual heavy cannons, and a secondary deflector just like the other ships. What is weird to me though is that we don't have any faction specific versions of the science dreadnoughts. We have 4 available through cross faction. One of those is through the sea store which is the one that I would recommend you all buy if, if you're going to buy anything. Just because you buy the ship once and it's available to all, all of your captains. You buy any of the other three, that's not the Cardassian one, you, you'll have to buy it for every single one of your captains. Our next category is Science Carriers. These honestly were just called carriers for the longest time. 
A lot of people still just call these just carriers because these were the original carriers inside the game. Really high hull. There's a couple different weapon layouts for these ships. The Carfi Battle Carrier, which is only a tier 5 um, rank right now. There is, there, there is no tier 6 Carfi Battle Carrier, which there really should be, but whatever. That one's the only one that has 7 weapons as, as a science carrier. The rest of them only have 6. They do have two hangar bays, and they can use two of the cannons, but carriers do not have access to secondary deflectors. It's just one of their quirks. They don't have access to any of that. So, as, as we look through this, the funny part is, with all the complaint that Federation captains had about wanting to get a carrier, they finally got a Tier 6 um, fleet carrier. The Royal Republic also has one, too, through Kelvin Timeline. And the Klingon Empire has zero the ones that, are, that they got the original OG science carriers don't have a tier 6 version for either of their main ships. If you're a Klingon captain and want to use a tier 6 science carrier, you have to either use the Breen carrier, if you happen to earn that a long time ago. It's been way a long time at this point. Or you have to go to the sea store and buy the Geminar Vanguard carrier. And pretend that that's, that's Klingon enough for you. It's really d disappointing. At, at the very least, Cryptic should add the Carfi Battle Carrier, even if they want to just keep the exact same skin and just make, make a tier 6 of it. They really should just do that. And our last subcategory is Scout Ships. And um, basically, this is a science ship that has high renewability, lower stats, and Raider flanking on, on top of its um, boost. Um, and damage through being able to use dual valve cannons as well. Now, right now inside the game, there's only two scout ships available. One is from the anniversary events um, towards the beginning of this year, and one is from the fleet colony. Now, many people are not in a fleet colony that's high enough to be able to get that, so a lot of people just can't access that that um, specific ship at all. Which is really unfortunate because with, with how fleet invites work, like if, you want, if you're invited to another, another fleet's map, that doesn't apply to the fleet military. I, I, I wish the Cryptic would change that because that would really help with younger fleets that are wanting to buy fleet starships a lot easier. I also have a different idea potentially, but I, I want to see what Cryptic does with um, the scaling tier 6 starships first before I say anything because they might already be doing that, but we will see in... Uh, in just a, just a few weeks. Now for the TLDR. This slide has all of the stats that I've been showing for the past little while. Um, the link to the Excel spreadsheet that, that all of these stats came from will be in the description. You feel free to check that and see what stats that I did wrong because, I mean, with over 200 starships that I did in this video, I am bound to make mistakes. And I probably did some stuff incorrectly with the... Um, the escort ships as well. Some stuff probably should have been escorts that should have been war warships and destroyers. Some destroyers probably should have been escorts, so on and so forth. Now, as for what ship that, that you, you should fly, my high recommendation is if, if you're going for a cruiser, um, if you're a tank captain, dreadnought cruisers or standard cruisers is probably the way to go for you. Dreadnought cruisers is probably the best at the moment just because. Um, with the new Discovery reputation, um, it is going to be able to give you extra crit, crit chance the higher that, that your that your whole capacity actually is on, on your ship. So the newer Dreadnought Cruisers that have really high um, base hull, it's going to give you a lot more critical chance than some of your older cruisers are going to be able to give you. If you're a DPS captain, I highly recommend just going in the Battle Cruiser realm and just using the Fleet Miracle Worker Battle Cruisers. They're, they're some of the best ships in the game for DPS in general. If you want a better ship than that, you either have to use an Escort or you have to go to the Sea Store or the Exchange to get something better. It's just, it's just the way that, that it goes right now. Now, if you're gonna, if you want to fly an Escort-esque ship, my high re re recommendation is to use a Warship or a, a Destroyer. Destroyer is, 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 most Destroyers are accessible through your fleet. Most Warships are accessible through cross-faction methods, so like through the Sea Store or through the Exchange. There's a couple of, of cross-faction Sea Store Warships. Well, there, there's one Sea Store Warship and the rest of the Warships are through the Exchange, but 
those are very well-rounded starships that basically if you're doing a DPS style and it's not exotic based for most of your for, for most of y'all especially if, if, if you're newer to the game they're probably gonna be your best ships for DPS inside the game yes the juggernaut ships in the game do you have a, a higher DPS ceiling of being able for potential DPS but you need, need a lot of good traits you need some pretty good duty officers and you need competitive engines and good piloting and experience inside the game to really capitalize on the Bob War Juggernaut or one of the um, Roman Republic Juggernaut um, Warpers from the from the sea store. With, with the exception of that, the warships and destroyers are going to be a better option for you. As for science vessels, obviously science destroyers and spearheads, especially the tier six ones, are obviously the best ones in the game. Very well rounded. Because they're extremely limited and in, in, in who's able to access those, they're both pretty expensive on the exchange. The multi-person science vessels are probably your best option overall. You're able to use exotic damage. You can use dual healthy cannons if you really want to. The Eternal multi-person science vessel is a really nice tank with the 31st century cruiser's console on top of it. Tank captains might find the Cardassian science drone a little bit more fun to fly, just because it has a much higher base hull on it especially with the new discovery reputation that's coming out soon but if you're wanting so yeah if you're wanting to use a ship that has that doesn't have super specific consoles to make it really good science drones might be the way to go if, if you're going to be a science tank captain otherwise multi science vessels is probably going to be the most economical way to go for a science captain All right, so as for some final thoughts, thoughts here, I have here on the screen, on the left, some neglected starship types that I think Cryptic should be adding to the game pretty soon. And on the right are just some interesting observations which I'm not gonna talk about. You can feel free to read those if you wish. Overall here, the Cruiser class is in good shape at the moment. I mean, it'd be cool if they added, P added a PVP variant, but it's not particularly needed. The Escort class needs a Federation and Realm Republic tactical carrier, and also the Federation and KDF captains need a specific Juggernaut to be in really good shape too. That would be really nice cryptic. Science vessels really need a lot more work in quantity as well as quality. It's extremely obvious to me the cryptic needs to add, at minimum, a tier 6 Carfee Bow carrier, also preferably a tier 6 Volkuv carrier. Um, as well as a non-Federation specific um, spearhead and science destroyer to the game, that, that's tier 6. It'd be really easy to do this with a Miracle Worker science vessel. That would fit that role perfectly, honestly. I mean, it'd be, it would also be super cool if they added some faction specific science dreadnoughts too, but I mean, we do have a couple of decent ones in, in the game that do serve the purpose that we need them to serve. So yeah, that's basically it for this video um hopefully it was fun and ed educational and interesting to you all i might dive into more of this with the various specializations in the game with different with different starships and where the different gaps are the cryptic should be adding into the game in the near future beyond you know a science miracle worker starship if i haven't mentioned that before anyways thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day